This is a story about my rescue. Um, in 2010, the early 2010, in January 2010, I was not given a restaurant, but I was handed a restaurant by a financier in Stockholm. A restaurant group that wanted to open a new restaurant and they asked me to run it. This is of course a great privilege. Something that does not happen to any chef. And I was very humbled, but very scared. I knew that this restaurant would get reviewed very early. I was a renowned chef, I was on TV, so I knew that within two to three weeks, all the major newspaper would have had dinner in the restaurant. That's terrifying. So I told the owner and the restaurant group that give me at least six months to figure something out. You know, I need, I need time to come up with an idea for the restaurant. I need time to, to come up with something. Luckily, the summer came, and you know in July in Stockholm, everything closes down. It's the best time of year to think. There's no one in the city, and I love strolling around in Stockholm city during the summer, because you, you the only thing you see is like two Italian tourists on those free bikes. <laughs> it's close to doom day in the city. So like most other Stockholmers, I left for the archipelagos to my summer house small cottage with no electricity. That summer was magical. I don't know if you remember it, but 2010 was an amazing summer. It was so warm, and my f my I had my baby boy in my hands. I had a newborn at home, and, and I spent the whole summer just cooking. I cooked on a cast iron stove. Like most s Swedish people have seen it in their cottage or in their summer house. And I loved it. I had never cooked on one. I fell in love with the cast iron stove. It was great. And all my chef friends came over to my house and loved the food. They were amazed by the cooking. So the summer became fall, and um, I still hadn't come up with the idea for the new restaurant. It wasn't there, it wasn't, wasn't completely there. Of course, it was back of my head at the all the time, but I, ah, and, uh, the restaurant group called and they're like, have you got the idea? Have you got the restaurant? We're paying rent every month. Do you know what a rent cost in the middle of the city? And says, ah, oh, it's coming up, it's coming up. Uh, uh, soon, I'm, I'm coming there, so soon. And um, by coincidence, I tumbled upon a, f a chef friend at a party. His name is Gustav Utterberg, and I love him <laughs> for many reasons. But the first reason I loved him and the thing I fell in love with he loved the outdoor so much. He loves outdoor and he loves outdoor cooking. He loves the outdoor so much that he even got Fjellräven tattooed, the logo behind his <laughs> ear. <laughs> it's a Swedish outdoor company, most famous for its backpacks, but he had it tattooed on the back of his head. <laughs> and he taught me great things about outdoor cooking, about open fire cooking, how to cook on, an, on, on just the flames. So the party ended and we split up and I didn't think of him that much, but he called me up. It's like, Nicholas, he called me up on the phone. Do you have a job for me? I'm unemployed. I quit my job. I don't have a place to work. Ah, uh, well, I have a brasserie. It's just like, it's not really suitable for you. You're way too talented for a brasserie. And he said, well, open a restaurant. And I'm like, of course, this is it. I'm going to combine the two things, open fire cooking, outdoor cooking of Gustav's talented with my stove from my cottage and just open a restaurant. So we went for dinner in the heart of Stockholm for a restaurant. And that dinner was the best dinner in my entire life. We drew this drawing of the restaurant, of the kitchen, not the whole, the kitchen. We drew the kitchen. We drew exactly how it was going to look like. 
where the stove was going to be, where the cast iron was going to be, where the open fire flames were going to burst, and where the wood oven would stand, where we would bake our organic bread. And we were all excited, and, and this night just flew off. And then we were so happy. We left that restaurant like, we got it. This is it. This is the future. This is our future restaurant. I'm just going to tell my financiers I need a couple of millions to build an <laughs> open fire kitchen. <laughs> but now, the trouble headed. This is what a kitchen looks like. It's a huge difference between this kitchen and the kitchen I showed you earlier. This is a stainless steel heaven. This is what both me, Gustav, the whole industry was raised in and cooked in. It's had it, has, it doesn't have any soul, it doesn't have any flavor or essence, but this is what the kitchen looked like. So we knew that we had to get someone in for help, of course, and we did. But there this is probably what had halted me earlier, because there was too much. There were too many gadgets in a modern kitchen. There's just so many things you can do. This is another example of different gadgets you, they sell us. They want us to have so many stuff, the modern chef, that you almost become like a Ville Vonka, you know? <laughs> you can do anything. That chewing gum they have in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, it's actually possible. I could do that. It would take me a couple of hours, but I could. Because there's so many gadgets. So why are we so in love with gadgets? Why do we love electricity so much? And I think it has to do, s it's a little bit Swedish or Scandinavian, I would think, because if when I started think of thinking of it, after I hit some water, I get so excited. <laughs> when you started thinking of it, it's, uh, where were I? It was the electricity. And when electricity was introduced in the 1950s in Sweden, we just got rid of all our techniques. But in other countries, they didn't. Why do we love Italian pizza so much? Because it's wood oven pizza. Why do we love American barbecue? Because it's grilled. They kept their cooking technique. We didn't. We got rid of our techniques. We thought it was great with an electric stove. It was fantastic with convection oven. It was fantastic with induction. Let's add all that stuff into it. But we didn't want that. We wanted to go back to the roots. This is how our kitchen looks like. Now, of course it sounds simple, but of course we had a lot of problems. <sighs> One big problem was controlling the heat. Because we didn't want the restaurant to become a museum. It was not supposed to be Skansen, the local museum here in Stockholm. It's supposed to be a modern, contemporary restaurant. And not only was it gonna supposed to be a restaurant, it was going to be one of the number one restaurants in Sweden. We were going to compete with the best Michelin restaurants in the city. And how would we do that? How would we compete with a sailing boat against a motor yacht? Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the cast iron pot. This is what made it possible. After a while, we realized that the only way we could control the heat was with the help of cast iron. This has, of course, been done for thousands of years. We just has, haven't realized how great the cast iron pot was. When we put the cast iron pot into the fire, not only does it sear your meat or your fish perfectly, it keeps the flames away. Because that's the difference between Scandinavian open fire cooking and grilling. It's amber. We do not use amber. We don't want amber. We want the flames, the smoke, the heat. We want that, you know, the power from the fire, the birch fire. So with help of the cast iron pan, just straight into the fire, we controlled the heat. But something else happened. The first three months, we didn't have any guests in the restaurant. We were only cooking. And I went to the hardware store probably 10 times a day. 
because we couldn't go to a normal sto sto store to buy equipment. Look at this, I'll show you an example on the top hand side, these gloves that we bought were big, thick stones or cast iron ones. When I was at the hardware store, Gustav calls me and he goes, Nicholas, I just cooked a piece of lobster, the best lobster I've ever had. And I cooked it with tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. <laughs> and I tell you why I hate tomatoes. Tomatoes has nothing to do with Scandinavian food. It's utterly Southern European ingredient. So I told Gustav, well, keep the lobster, put the tomatoes on the side. And he went, okay, I'll do that, but it's amazing. You must come, you must come. You know, forget the hardware store, come into the restaurant, I must show you. So I got back to the restaurant, and there on a cast iron stove, a lobster piece was bubbling in butter. And he added a little bit of acid into the cast iron pan. And anyone who's been to culinary school knows that acid is a no-no. Don't put acid in a cast iron pan. Don't use vinegar. Don't use acidity f vegetables. He did the opposite. He used tomatoes and a little bit of lemon. He used acid into the cast iron pan. And the acid, the cast iron pan, the butter and the salt and the fire and the smoke, something happened. It was magical. It was the absolutely most delicious tomato, though I don't even like tomatoes, <laughs> that I've ever had in my entire life. And I knew with just one bite, one chew from the fork, that we were on something, that this was going to be an amazing restaurant. So we opened it. We got ready for the guests. The a la carte was done. The wines were cooling down. You know, we I think I even put a chef jacket on. <laughs> we were ready. And the guests that came, were they as amazed as me? No. They did not get it. They did not get how can a wood oven fire restaurant not serve grilled food. <laughs> even if you Google my name today, I think the first one is, I is he married or something, but the, <laughs> 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 the second one is Niklas Ekstedt grill. I don't even have a grill. I'm the opposite to the grill. I'm the open fire cooking. I don't want amber. I don't have a grill bar. I don't want it. I want the cast iron pan. But still, people automatically thought we were a grill because we were using fire. That's how set our mindsets were. We were so far away from our ancient cooking techniques that we didn't even know that they existed. So that's how far it's gone. So, luckily, food journalists came. <laughs> <coughs> Though I don't love them all the time, <laughs> this was my moment. They saved me. The coming two to three months, of oh the six months after the opening, great reviews started coming in. And they completely got the whole idea of open fire cooking. And the international journalists came, and they loved it too. So I was blessed with a full restaurant. And I was blessed with coming on ease with my cooking, with my roots, and with Scandinavian techniques. Because for so long, I had been cooking organic vegetables, locally grown grains, but with super modern techniques. You know, it doesn't make sense. What's the point with having super local products if you add texturas to them? Texturas is our E numbers, the restaurant's E numbers, the, the secret ingredients of restaurants. No, this was it for me. And today, though this picture is a little, I, 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 I do not chop the wood in the restaurant. Right? <laughs> 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 I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't chop the wood, it comes chopped. Uh, we started discovering other things. 
we started discovering or reading about the use of chimney. In the older days, we always used to use the chimney. Of course, it was there. There was heat. There was smoke. Why not? Why weren't we supposed to use the chimney? We started making our own sausages in the chimney. We started drying tomatoes and vegetables. We even make meringue in the, in the chimney. We started making waffles with cast iron pan. You know the old way you used to cook waffles in a cast iron pan just above the fire? It's really, really hard, but it's delicious and it's super simple. <laughs> <laughs> On the far hand right corner, you can see some, some Swedish octopus being fried in the cast iron pan. And I always compare it, my cooking, to they ask me, do you, do you cook over your fire at home? Yes, of course I do. It's the simplest thing we can do. You know, Weber probably wants you to put their two expensive briquettes into your, to your grill, but just take the grill bar away and fill it with birch wood. Light the fire, add a cast iron pan. That's it. That's all you need. Then you're cooking like we are. It's hard to go back to electricity after this. Sometimes I compare an open fire cooked, com if you cooked over an open fire and then you go to an electric stove, it's like going from the ocean to a lake. This is much, much, much more fun. And maybe it's th that's why I'm so happy today. Maybe it's because I found the little caveman inside me. <laughs> you know the way that you sometimes sit on a summer evening looking into the fire and get a, a little weird, you know? <laughs> That's how I have it every day at work. And uh, in the future, I'll never stop cooking over an open fire, but I would like to add even more stuff. So that's what you probably will hear from me next time. Thank you so much for having me here and uh, hope you have a great evening.